Hi, I'm CJ and this is my RC channel. To make sure that you have uh, these pieces positioned properly, first glue these in place, these uh, runners, and then use a push pin, put it through the plywood, and then uh, lower the piece of plywood into place uh, push with the push pin through the hole to make sure that you have these pieces aligned, and then glue. Uh, now, I used a uh, thin to ju and just let it wick in around the edges um, while holding it in place. But where it uh, attaches to the um, the plywood, uh, just like I have in many other spots, I'm going to uh, fill it this with um, gap filler and uh, hit it with some zap. So now it's time to do some carbon fiber rods. Um, make sure that you snap them into the slots. You don't want them to be uh, above the, uh, the notch that they're supposed to go into, or you won't be able to get the uh, balsa wood sheet that's going to go on top to level. So just you know, kind of press against them and click them in. The pieces on the side here go through some holes. Uh, I didn't have any trouble pushing them through, um, even though I had uh, done a good bit of CA and stuff, but that's because I hadn't gone heavy on the CA where the balsa wood is. Uh, otherwise, I might have accidentally filled them. You definitely want to get you know, everything in place back to the tail here before you try putting these in, because they, uh, they definitely have a lot of stress and add a lot of strength too. Then you do the side pieces, uh, start with um, the long rail down the side, and then add in these formers in whichever order you want. Um, and then you can do the, uh, do the two carbon fiber rods. So this is where things are at. Now I'm gonna start doing the balsa sheeting. I'm gonna start by, uh, I was gonna put this piece on here over the cockpit, but I might actually wait on this piece here. I wanna make sure I can get in with my fingers to do servos and such. Uh, so I might, I think I'm gonna, I am, I've, I've decided. I'm gonna leave this piece off here. Uh, I'll go ahead and do this section here. Uh, I'll do the sides and I'll put this on afterwards um, after I've put a pair of servos in here and gotten some uh, basic linkages set up um, so I think that's a better way to go um, because that's fairly fragile and it's not a very large opening getting getting my hands in there is hard enough without that in the way let's see is there anything else I need to be uh, concerned about I don't think so. We'll just uh, move forward as that goes. Um, I can sheet the nose area with uh, this piece here. Let's see. Yeah, that just goes right over there. Um, one thing I would do, and uh, I don't think it's as critical here as it is with this piece, um, I would sand a bit of a an angle into here and here uh, so that they join up a little better um, when this wraps around. So soon I'm going to be moving on to the wing. Uh, but before I do that I need to, I'm going to sheet the sides and the top of the rear. So now it's time to uh, put on these two external doublers they go on here like so and I'm going to go ahead and do those with uh, slow zap and then probably uh, clamp them in place at least here use some small uh, crimper clamps So, um, 
anyway, that's where we're at right now. Everything's going together really well. Um, going along quick. It's a said it before, but this is definitely a nice kit. Um, once you figure out some stuff about how to get things, uh, put things together and where things go, it, um, it builds up nice. Okay, here's another build tip. When you are doing the side panels, they look almost symmetrical, but they're not quite. One side's a little larger than the other, and so you need to make sure that you're putting that in the correct position so that things line up right. If it looks a little askew, flip it and you'll, you'll realize that you did it the wrong way. The side that's slightly taller goes at the bottom and the shorter side goes at the top. Now, when you're putting this on, uh, I found that the best way to do this was line it up okay and make sure you've got the front end flush so it's as far forward or back as it needs to be okay and then glue the tail down here the tip glue that down first then you know a little bit at a time drip some glue in here just use like thin ca hold it um, I usually put a piece of plastic, you know, just a scrap of, uh, you know, any kind of, of clear plastic, uh, saran, um, um, old modeling bags, whatever you got, uh, something that the CA won't stick to, and because uh, the, the thin CA will wick through the wood onto your finger and glue you to it. So you want to hold it, drop a little CA down there, and just tack this down as you go from the back to the front, okay, and then once you've got it tacked down like this, just along the, the sides, so the, the top and bottom aren't attached yet, you've just done the center line along this, uh, along this long rib here. Then start at the front now and bend the wood along the edge. If you need to, uh, spritz it with a little bit of water uh, like with a spray bottle, just to get it damp, and that'll help you uh, bend it if it's if it seems like it's going to crack on you. Um, I didn't have any problems, but uh, you know it just depends on how humid your environment is, things like that. Um, and then glue this edge down, you know, a bit at a time. You know, just arc it down. Now, ideally, if you've got things positioned properly, the wood, the edge here is going to glue onto this carbon rod and that's what you want to do so you want to you know you like i said use a piece of plastic and just hold it down there and you know put a drop of ca let it wick in in between the wood and the carbon fiber hold it down for a few seconds let it let it take and then move on to the next section and just do it you know a half inch to an inch at a time and uh, work your way from front to back because the back is tacked down already so that's in position um, so it that way things it just goes together nice and easy um, and you'll end up with it looking like this um, I also put in these two pieces uh, these were oh bu -bu 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 -bu. It's one of those things that you can just see in, in one of the photos. Um, yeah. Here. It's on, it's on this sheet here. And uh, there's three pieces of wood. F5, F7, F6. And those go 5, 6, and 7 in that order. So uh, the bigger triangle is your first one. That's F5. Uh, the little footer, and then the other triangle here. Um, this is for um, the wing strut. It's just kind of a like a little place for it to fit into. It's ultimately going to be held by the anchor, but definitely do a good job gluing these down. Um, basically, I got them in position, tacked them down with a little bit of CA, and then I hit the outer edges uh, with some gap fill and uh, hit it with some jet to... Uh, fill it out, set it a little quicker. 
Um, you don't want to get fillets on the inside uh, because you're going to want to have a piece of aluminum strap uh, go down and fit flat in there. So uh, avoid getting excess gluing on the inner surfaces and uh, you can go to town on the outers, that's fine. So after I uh, glue this piece, I'm going to be doing the tail piece and that's going to be the same methodology. I'm going to anchor it at the rear first, tack it down the center, and then work my way from the front backwards, arcing it over and gluing it to the carbon fiber rods. Now, um, I didn't mention this, but once you get these rods in, I would um, wick a little bit of CA uh, in here to glue the carbon fiber rods to the uh, balsa wood. That's going to help provide structural strength for your tail section. Not a huge deal, but every little bit helps. So uh, the video will pick up when I have completed those two sections and I'm ready to move on. Uh, if I come across anything else uh, interesting or noteworthy uh, while I'm doing those two bits, I will cover that in the next segment. Well, the fuselage is almost done. As I mentioned, I'm going to leave this piece of sheeting off over the, uh, the cockpit for right now until I... Uh, get the servos mounted. Uh, they don't have to be all uh, connected, but I want to at least get them mounted in place. And uh, when you're doing this piece here, make sure that you line up the tail and make sure that you leave uh, this doubler free. Uh, you don't want this piece of wood covering that because you need that strip for this. So this gets mounted to the the bulkhead, the thinner bulkhead, and then the doubler is used to anchor this. So if you place this piece at the rear of the doubler here, at this notch, you should that should line up for you. Just don't make it forward of that. The last couple pieces here are fairly small. Uh, we have uh, F16 and 17. That's these two pieces here. Um, one of these is going to go right here. And F17 goes up in here. I'm going to do those in just a moment. Just trying to show you the la where the last few pieces go. We have a pair of F3s. Those are going to go into these notches right here. Something like that probably going to have to use a pair of needle nose to get those in there and because uh, this little notch should be underneath that uh, edge of um, carbon fiber rod probably would have been better to have put these in in advance um, but didn't see that one coming so I can't uh, in the absence of proper directions, I can't get everything right for you on the build. So if you uh, try to remember to do these ahead of time, if you're watching this in preparation, I'll try to make a note uh, earlier in the video sequence. We have F9 here. I'm not 100% sure where this goes. I'm going to try to figure that out shortly. And then we have these three F2s. Now, um, these are just doublers. Um, I don't know this for a hundred percent, but I am, this is what I believe they are for. And I'm going to look into this and see if I can't find uh, justification or corroboration for this. I believe they are going to go underneath these tabs as doublers to provide more depth uh, of wood for the screws that anchor the cowl in place. Now again, those would go on the inside here, not on this outer surface. So bear that in mind. And uh, I have looked and I didn't see anything regarding those, but I'll look some more and see if I can't spot something uh, in the few photos that are there. Um, with the extent, these are the only F items left. And these are probably all doublers 
for various screws like here and here and uh, probably here and here uh, possibly well then it's not going to go behind that tab um, I'm not sure where else I'll have to uh, I'll have to look around and see what else I can spot but um, yeah that's that's what it looks like um, they're just doublers and uh, let's see two four eight one two three four so it's possible because I can I don't see any other holes well wait a second there's well that wouldn't you couldn't put one behind here because there's not enough space it wouldn't be a circle so maybe they want you to double the doublers or uh, well then there's this here as well and again that just like this thing you're not going to be able to put one of those brown discs on this surface so that doesn't make sense either um, not sure uh, I'm going to scour the pictures and directions, see if I can figure that out for you guys, okay? Okay, F9 Mystery Solved. F9 goes right under here. And this hole is obviously part of the hatch mounting system because that's going to be uh, over top of this hole here because the hatch fits in like that so basically it's a stop for the center you've got stops at all four corners and uh, so that's going to go behind there until I uh, figure out what type of mechanism is going to hold this in place I'm not going to glue this in it's easily gotten to uh, I can glue it in at any time during the process, even after covering. So I think I'm gonna wait until I, uh, I figure out uh, what type of latch they're using and do I like it or do I wanna put in something of my own. Uh, so we'll just, uh, I'm gonna wait on these two. I'm gonna put them in a, a bag and mark it and set them aside. These, uh, these round doublers, I went ahead and uh, put, uh, four of them in as you can see there's two down there it's interesting the uh, this uh, piece of excuse me piece of wood right here is um, f32 and these are f32 dash ones now there's a bunch of them and I'm almost wondering if maybe they included more than necessary using more than one in each location seems like overkill uh, I don't think having having it be um, you know, three thicknesses deep is worthwhile uh, necessarily, depending on the type of hardware that's going to be used. I may, depending on the hardware, if it's uh, hopefully it's bolts. If it's not bolts, I may get use bolts of my own. I've got some uh, fairly small uh, nylon hardware, and I've got a set of metric taps, uh, so I could drill these holes out. I've got metric drill bits as well. Finally. I could drill these holes and then tap them uh, to the thread size of some nylon bolts and have a, uh, a better outcome than I would get from just a, a self-tapping wood screw. And I also put a pair of them uh, beneath here. Now, how did I do that? It is looks like a little acrobatics is required, and, and it is. Um, what I did was I took a, uh, a T-pin or push pin and made sure that the hole was you know clear and then put one of these on the t-pin and uh, in the case of the bottom ones I was able to reach under with my fingers and get it in place in the case of these guys here what I did was just uh, pop this in here and I'll give you a basic demonstration this hole hasn't been cleared yet either Okay, so I took a pair of needle nose pliers and grabbed the end of the T-pin like this. Um, it's going to be hard to show you with the camera. Basically, I just reached in like this and 
uh, you know, looked under, found the hole, uh, got it started, and then reached back with one finger to, you know, stop the T-pin, pulled it out, grabbed it from above with the needle nose pliers, and then with the, uh, well, the wooden thing is, this hole is not fully cleared yet. So, and there's some glue on this T-pin at the moment. So just imagine the T-pins at the base. I mean, the wood here is at the base of the T-pin. Um, I held it down so I could reach in through this window here and um, put some uh, zap gap on this wooden surface and then pull up, holding the, um, using the base of the T-pin to hold the wood uh, against this surface. And uh, so, um, I just rotated it a little bit as it dried and let this doubler adhere. Uh, and once I was sure that it was stuck on and it wasn't just going to fall off, um, pushed the T-pin back through and uh, pulled it out and then uh, let, it, let the doubler continue to dry. But that way I was able to put some compression against it with the T-pin to make sure it got a good joint. So those four are in. Um, I just ran out of thin CA. Ideally, I would uh, saturate those two, uh, the four doublers, with a little bit of extra CA, uh, thin CA. Let it wick in and uh, you know kind of solidify in them so they don't split apart. Because this plywood, um, as you can see from here, it, it can split on you. Uh, so I want to make sure that those little discs are going to be really solid. I'll probably saturate them with some thin CA tomorrow uh, when I pick some up at the store and then uh, whack it with some uh, kicker and, um, you know, really lock them in place. I also want to reach in here a little bit with some gap fill and fill it the edge, the inner edge on this side uh, for this surface. Uh, again, as I've mentioned earlier, this inner structure here, this piece, uh, the battery tr and servo tray and uh, these four bulkheads are a big part of the overall structural strength of the uh, of the airplane, uh, as well as this little bulkhead here, uh, here that needs to be filleted as well. So I need to kind of go back over this and just kind of uh, hit some joints that I just tacked in place and um, make sure they're solid. Uh, so that leaves these F2s. And um, I've looked, I could not spot anything. Um, these are F2s here also, they just don't, these have a tab that goes through the firewall to mount them in place. I can't think of any other place that these little suckers would go other than to uh, double up these here. You know, if I think that I need doublers here or here, I can always make some of my own from some scrap. Uh, I always recommend hanging on to, you know, pieces like this after you've cut parts out, you know, that are a, a usable size, something that you could make something out of later. I've got a whole box of uh, various uh, thicknesses of, of plywood and, and some of it's, you know, nice solid wood. Some of these kits come with really good quality wood and, and sometimes you need a, a piece to cut something out and, uh, you know, make a doubler or, or some... Uh, fillets or something so never hurts to keep some of that around so that is about it for the fuselage um, I'm gonna wait on these till later as well um, I'm gonna do those toward the tail end of the build uh, I'm gonna keep these last couple uh, discs in case I find a use for them um, so I am calling the fuselage built with the exception of these two sheets of wood. I'm going to go ahead and throw this one on as long as I'm into this. This isn't going to, well, yeah, I'm going to leave this off too for now because I haven't really planned out my radio positioning. Um, I might want to put the ESC back here. This might be a good spot to uh, drop uh, some hot glue or um, some Velcro and stick the, the ESC in here. Uh, that way the uh, motor uh, wires could come in from underneath and connect to the ESC up here. And then the wires from the other side would come back around to connect to the battery and then off to the receiver.
This might be a good place for the receiver right here or right here. Obviously, these are the <coughs> holes for the servos. And I would assume that's our that's our battery tray right there. That's as big as the battery is going to be. So I'm not sure uh, what size batteries I'm going to use with this. But that's something I'll cover later. I might have to uh, just measure that out and do a little shopping and find the right size battery. I'm figuring a, uh, a three cell. I'd like to get a 2200 if possible. Certainly something in the 1900 range would be good. But uh, 2200 uh, would be a good size battery for this plane. Get a nice long flight time out of it. And that may also have to do with balance as well. Finding a uh, not only a pack that is the right length, but a fatter pack that has a longer run time will weigh more. And uh, these old biplanes, the CGs are, are pretty far forward. And um, a lot of people, I've uh, you know, talked to different people, I've seen other people build these. And biplanes are always hard to get enough nose weight. You almost always end up having to add weight and if you can add weight in the form of usable hardware uh, as in a fatter battery with longer runtime uh, good way to go so we'll see how that goes i'm gonna just i'm gonna leave those two off for now put them with the hatch and uh cross that bridge once i have decided on things because if i cover this right now uh and i do decide that that's where i want to put the esc and that does look like a really nice place because Again, it can be put lengthwise, so the wires will come out to either side. Uh, the ones that connect to the battery can drop uh, down one side and uh, connect to the battery. The ones that go to the motor can drop down the other side and through one of these uh, access holes here. So, yeah, better to, uh, better to wait, get some stuff mounted, get further down the build. So tomorrow... Um, when I get some more thin CA, I am going to start into the wings. I did not have any problem putting these uh, little pieces in. Uh, I mentioned that I would might have to use a needle nose pliers. That's exactly what I did. I just kind of put them in at an angle with the uh, uh, the uh, little notched uh, footer there that's going to go into that hole, uh, and then flipped it up so that the uh, the groove aligned itself with the carbon fiber rod and as you can see um, that went in just fine so if you don't put those in ahead of doing the carbon fiber rods it's not a problem it didn't take any any effort i didn't have to pry at it or risk breaking anything you just uh, start it in at an angle you get the uh, little tab set to drop into the hole uh, you twist it up so that it locks onto the carbon fiber rod and you're in just like that well, I hope you enjoyed this video or this series of videos so far. I hope you're learning some stuff. Please click like and please subscribe to my channel.